Okay, so you've trained your machine learning model in a Jupyter Notebook and are happy with the results. Now what? In this video, I will show you how to export and load your machine learning models so you can use that model to make predictions on new data without having to train the model again. Now, before we can export the machine learning model, we of course have to first create a machine learning model. So in this video, I will first quickly build up a simple regression model using a data set that I found online. It's from Capital Bike Share. You can find the link to the data set here. And I will also push this uh, project to my GitHub repository and I will leave the link in the description. So if you want to follow along, you can clone into the repository and then you will have access to all the code that you see in this video. So I will start off by firing up Python interactive session in Visual Studio code and I will load the data using the pd.readcsv uh, method and then we can have a look at the data. So this data set basically tells us how many bikes were rented out on which day and then uh, according to the other parameters over here we can build a regression model to try and predict the amount of rentals for a given day. Now I will quickly go over the following steps because the goal is to show you how to export the model not how to create one. So we'll continue by selecting the relevant features and if we run this code over here we can see that we have now limited the bike data set to only the features that are in this list and we'll continue to convert the category columns to the correct data type check it out looking good let's have another look at the data set that looks good for now this will be the data set that we'll be using for the model so now all we have to do is export the data set so i use the to pickle function and export it to data processed let's run this Okay, so I started in a new file now. So previously we were in the make data set file where we prepare the data set for training. And now we're in the export model file where we're going to train the model and then export it. So uh, I've already put in place some uh, imports that we have to do. And then uh, we go ahead and load the data again. Now we also define a target which is rentals, so the last column over here. Then we'll create a basic train test split. We'll use 80% for the training size. And what I do here to define the X and the Y is I use the data set and then I use the drop. And that's why I've defined the target. So doing this, we can run this and we will have the data frame, but without the target. And then for the Y, we do, we do the exact opposite. So we take the data set and we only take the target. So looking at the Y, we only have the bike rentals value over here and the X contains all the other data. Then I'll put it into the train uh, test split from the SK Learn model selection train test split. And then you can see we have a nice uh, split for our model. So we have X train and X test. So that should do it for now. All right, the next step is to train the model. And for this, we're going to set up a scikit-learn pipeline. So we'll start off by identifying the numerical features and then create a pipeline with a standard scaler to scale the numerical features. Second, we'll add a pipeline step to transform the categorical features. So we'll use a one hot encoder for the categorical features. And then we combine the processing steps with a column transformer. And then we'll put everything together in the pipeline and we'll use a random forest regressor for our estimator. Then the final step is to train the model by calling the dot fit method on the pipeline object and inputting our training data. So now let's run everything. We'll do these steps first and then we can get a graphical representation of our pipeline. So that is what's inside our pipeline. And then here we uh, run the fit method and we train the model. So it goes very fast because the data set is not that big. All right, and then it's time to do a quick evaluation of the model. So we've just trained it and then we're going to get predictions. So let's run this, see what's inside it. So this is an array. Uh, with all the predictions for the model. So this was our test set that we set aside and we use that to make the predictions. And then we can calculate some metrics using the mean squared error and the R2 score from the sklearn.metrics. Print these, so what we can see, we have a root mean squared error of 339. So this would be uh, an error of the estimation of the bike sales per day. So this would be the root mean squared error for that. And then we have an R2 score of 0.75. Now I won't bother going into these results and trying to tune everything because we just want to show you how to export the model, but we can also have another quick look at how the model performs by uh, creating these plots. And these are some custom functions of mine that uh, are available from the utility.visualize. So um, if you clone this project, you can also get access to these plots over here. Basically what we're seeing here is we have a predicted versus true where the blue line are the true values and these are sorted so these are the observations in the test set and then we have the uh, value for the bike rentals and then the purple line is the prediction of our model and now in an ideal world where we have a perfect model 
each of the purple dots would be exactly at the same position as uh, the blue dots. But of course, this is not the case because as you can see here, our model is not perfect. But overall, we can see that it's kind of following uh, the trend. And we can also have a look at the residual plot over here. So this is a histogram of the residuals. Okay, so now I'm happy with the results and I wanna export this model so we can use it later to create new predictions on new data without having to train the model again. So. We are going to use the joblib library for this and specifically the dot dump method. And you can check out the documentation over here. I will also leave a link to this, but basically what we can do with the joblib library, and this is similar to the pickle, pickle library that you sometimes see, is we can take a Python object and then export it to our hard drive in a serialized format. And basically what this means is we can take any Python object that we have. So this could be a list, this could be an array, this could be a Pandas data frame or a trained model. This could be a scikit-learn model or a neural network, for example. Uh, we can take that object and then serialize it and store it on our hard drive. And then later what we can do, we can use the joblib.load method. And that method can read that serialized format and basically deserialize it and then load it into a Python object again. So let me show you how how this works. We first have to import the joblib library, so make sure that is imported. And then what we can do, we can run joblib.dump, we can give a value and a file name. And the value is basically the Python object that you want to store for later and then load. And the file name is basically how we want to call the file and also where we want to save the file. So what I'm going to do is I'm not only going to export the model, but I'm also going to export the reference columns and the target columns. And I will later show you why this is very helpful to do it this way. And we can do this by turning that into a list. So we can only export one value, but by putting it into a list, it still is a Python object. And we can later just load that list and then unpack the variables. So let me show you the ref calls first. So these are basically all the columns that are contained within our X that we stored. And our model is trained to use these columns as input to make a predictions about the rentals. So that is what's stored in the ref columns. And then the target, of course, we identified as just rentals over here. And then our model is a trained scikit-learn pipeline. All right, so I'll now run this line to export this list to the models folder in our directory. So let's run that. And then we can have a look at our models folder over here. And we can see that we have a model.pkl file. And if you're wondering what a serialized file looks like, this is it. So this is the model.pkl file opened up in Sublime. All right, so we've exported the model and now we wanna load it again to make predictions on new data. So I've opened up a new file, predictmodel.py, and I've done some basic imports here and then we load the data. And note that I'm using the raw data again here. So I'm using the read CSV method on the original data set. And I'm doing this to demonstrate why it's convenient to also export the reference columns, the target, and also why the scikit-learn pipelines are very powerful. So this is the raw data set. And let's just for the sake of simplicity, take a sample from this. So we'll take a sample of let's say 20. So what this will do, it will take 20 random samples and let's just pretend like this is new data. So let's save this as new sample, save it, check it out. Okay, so now we have a sample variable which contains 20 observations. All right, now let's load the model. And the way we do this is by running the joblib.load method and then we link to the model over here that we've just exported. And since we've used the list to export everything, we now have to define the same three variables that are stored in the list. So Python will unpack it properly. So what we can do if we run this, we see we have a model, we have our reference columns and we have our target. Okay, and now we can use the model to make predictions without having to train it again. So let's make predictions. And here you can see why the ref columns and the target are essential. So what we can do is we can remember that the ref columns contains all the columns and then we have our new sample which is the data. And then if we run it like this, so we create a subset, then our X variable will only contain the columns that are used within the model. And we can do the same for our Y variable. So let's run that. And then we can see our Y variable, which is our target variable. And then we can use this to create predictions, run it like this, and then here we can show everything. So as you can see, we get 20 predictions for the 20 samples that we put into the model. And now we can do the same evaluation again. So we cal calculate the metrics, we can print them. What do we have? Uh, we get an almost perfect R score here, a very low root mean squared error of 152. Um, and this is not that surprising because we're 
probably using data points that the model trained on because I just took a, a random sample. But let's visualize the, the results over here using the predicted versus true plot. And as you can see, the model is almost spot on. But of course we cheated a little, so keep that in mind. And that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. And if you wanna learn more about working with data, then subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos that will pop up on the screen right now.